Okay, here we are on the 180 Sea Runner by Hughes Craft with the offshore bracket and a Honda 90 and 99 or 8, one of the two, pretty much the same. Okay, here we go looking around. Uh, we've got our unit in VHF stereo there. We got starboard wiper, port wiper, bilge pump. You can hear it come on. We've got nav lights. I can't see those uh, from here. Horn, no horn, no worky. They never work though. Uh, volts up here at 14, it's good. Fuel gas, trim tilt, it moves, that's good. 668.1 hours on the engine. And the Garmin, I couldn't get it to turn on. I tried a minute ago, and so we need to check the fuses or whatnot on that, but it's not turning on and motors running as you saw start up it is carbureted so you push this fast idle all the way up to here hold it while you're cranking it and then hold it still all the way up and it'll sputter and jump around a little bit and then you just drop it down real fast so it doesn't rev up real high oil and temp no lights there here columbia river all the way from here holy smokes that's a ways from us. Okay, so let's give this boat a run around and try it out. Okay, get the motor in the right direction and uh, see if we can back off of this little trailer here. There she goes. Cool, we are free from the trailer. And we shall flip the boat around and get out on the lake for a run. Okay, I have to drive one hand so I can hold you guys up here. So you can kind of see around. Here we go. There's the Coast Guard helicopter too up there. I don't know if you can see it in the video. Heard all the way from Columbia River Bar, and then they're flying over there. Okay, let's get ourselves positioned here for a quick run. Let's see how we do. We'll try to get out a little ways here. Standard aluminum boat vibration when you hit just those certain RPMs. Okay. Motor's running good. We're right about there on the throttle. Okay, I'm going to set you down here so I can try to drive a little bit. Okay. 3,000 RPMs. Boat's starting to push off a little bit. Everything sounds good at this point. I've never ran this boat before. Adding a little more throttle. We're going to bring it up to about 35. Still plowing, trying to get free. Okay. And let's go ahead and move to 4,000, 4,500. I just want to bring it on plane. There she goes. She's starting to set up on plane. Oh, I had the motor up a lot actually. Okay, now it'll plane a little bit faster. Okay, there we go. Scooting right along now. I don't have the GPS. I'll use my phone here. We'll break that out so we have some GPS edge here. I like this. It's it's got cable steering, but this this wheel is tight. Look, look. I can crank it. It doesn't get any feedback whatsoever. I believe that's not hydraulic this is cable steer this is nice I like this I mean look at that okay we're about to hit our own wake here we're gonna get a little bit of a bump we'll see how she does right through that not too shabby not too bad at all this is a little deeper V than like a sportsman or a pro V okay and then 
We'll bring the trim up a little bit. There's another wake here we're hitting. There we go. All right. Set the boat down here. I like that steering on this boat. That's great. Let me get my phone out here. I just need to get a speed test. There's our speed box right there. I'm going to set it in here so we can keep an eye on our speed and see how it does that way. It has an adjustable seat, but I'm not going to adjust it yet. It's just a little bit far for me. Okay, motor trim is going down. Let's flip a around here okay straight now let's go for a let's go for a straight hole shot okay boats just it's not a neutral we're just in gear we're gonna see how it does trimmed all the way down 1000 rpms and full throttle seat fell over full throttle flying here climbing up trimming up bringing the trim up some more 27 28 6,000 rpms 29 there we go we get 30 the trim down a little bit we're starting to hop see that's going to port the sink now settle down i did the trim up a little too high for the boat i think you could get another i get a bit of more a bit better few uh miles per hour out of that because we only got 29 28 there um either prop not propping the motor needs to move up I think on there. You can see when we're, dri when we're driving here by the wake. You'll see the wake here. See how it's throwing water around the motor? Kind of just off to the side of the motor there, it's throwing water. There we go. Boat feels really planted. Definitely feels good that way. For some more throttle. Yeah, that motor could move up a couple holes, I'll bet you. We go into a hard turn here. Oh man. Oh yeah, that, that thing handles wonderful. This thing's very responsive. That has a full throttle. That has full throttles right there. And on a wake chewing the water up a little bit. I really like the steering of this boat. It's not sloppy at all. It's stiff. I don't have to touch it. It has no feedback at all from that motor. I really like the way this boat uh, maneuvers. Very responsive. It's going into the tight turn there. You might hear that rattling. That's that guy right there. That cover is rattling. But, man, yeah, this boat does definitely get it. I'm impressed, actually. Older boat, you know, but, gosh, this thing actually runs out nice. Not real fast. 28 miles an hour is where it looks like it's holding about. But not bad at all. Let's pull it off plane here. Set her down. Now we're on the coast right here. It might be slightly underpowered for, uh, I mean, we're talking slight. So fuel economy is gonna be better. It's always a give and take. That 90 horse does pretty decent for this. I mean, it's a heavy, big boat. And so, so but still, man, we were getting 28 miles an hour and, and we were able to definitely uh, uh, crank this boat around, move it around. I really like the way the steering is. I, there are very few boats that are this that are this nice on the steering. They, it just holds dead steady wherever you're at. 
and uh, it, it, it really uh, it rides through the chop good it's a wider heavier boat so it does really good in the chop for what it is and stuff so offshore bracket kind of keeps the noise down inside the boat It's still noisy enough but it's a metal boat too you got to understand metal boats are, are are louder and so you got some amenities on this boat we'll do the walk around but that's the uh, test drive now I'm gonna rip it around a little bit for you guys on the drone we have here a 2005 uh, Hughescraft Sea Runner 180 with offshore bracket, so probably about a 20 foot boat. Um, going here at the front, we have a two inch ball, um, cables, uh, safety cables, and a four flat connector, standard four flat. Um, have a fold away tongue here, so that's the Fulton setup. The uh, fold down jack, we have a heavy winch. Strap a little bit worn, but heavy winch. The bow of the boat has a welded on Dirks anchor guide, so the anchor sits in there as a clam cleat to grab the rope. Um, looking at the trailer, it's galvy, galvanized. Um, it does have LED lights on it, that's nice. Um, we've got, uh, looking down here at the keel, you can see some barnacle growth. That's going to want to get cleaned off, but we've got some, it comes off. Not easy, but it does come on. You see how easy it is, okay? Some of it comes off easier than others, but barnacle growth on there. Uh, let's see, this trailer at one point had brakes. You can see there's a brake line hanging off that we can snip off at the shop here, but but uh, it does not have brakes at this point because the trailer, the, the boat this size really isn't one that needs brakes. Um, got some damages here coming into the dock. We got a couple little dents. If you get the right light, you can see them. They're not real hard. They're just kind of divots. Uh, one here, one here, one here, and one here. A little one there uh, on the side. Looking down the side, it's just, you know, a little bit gray from the water stains, but but it looks straight down the sides. Um, it's got oil bath hubs on those. Those are great. We really like those oil bath hubs because those things make it a lot to or make it so that the bearings get really good uh, lubrication. Uh, side guides, so when you're putting it on the trailer, when we loaded it up just now, it was real easy to get on the trailer. Wasn't much challenge to it. Has the full top enclosure. You can see the plastic's got a little fade, got a bit of fading here. Not terrible as for as its age, but the top looks like it's, it's all intact. I don't see any holes from the bottom here. And then it's got the backdrop attached to it right now. So it would be a full enclosure on there. Uh, let's see in the back it had some downrigger mounts there I don't know if it had any downriggers did not have downriggers with it no uh, let's see here transducer that's for the lower ants up on the on the uh, port side there you see the offshore bracket it is an extension of the hole so you can you can definitely make this uh, a register this is over 20 foot um, 9 9 so we started that up ran good uh, the, the main motor ran good. It's a little bit rough on the bottom end because it's carbureted, but overall it did good. Pushed the boat 20, 20, max 29 miles an hour we got out of it. And so, uh, let's see, there's the drain plug here. Remember to take that out. This is the intake here for the live or the wash down right there. So you can spray down after you make it messy. Uh, let's see, one thing interesting, didn't see a boarding ladder on here. So it is a climb in setup. Here's the transducer for the Garmin. And as I'd stated in the other video, we didn't get that to turn on. We, that's gonna take a diagnosis, but it's a pretty new unit. So it ought to be good shape. We got a nice gouge here on the side. And the rest of this side actually looks a bit better than the other side. It's pretty good all around there overall. It does, uh, does have dual wipers, which is awesome. Having the dual wipers, that's a big deal. Uh, when you, you get there and you start throwing spray around, then that sure comes in handy and stuff. We've got our nav lights here on the windshield. And then, right, so let's hop on inside here and check out the interior. We do have a nice size fish box in this. That's a big fish box. In the transom there uh, it does not have a davit here but it has the rigging for one it's a Fulby brand so you should be able to find a replacement one for it and so 
Here we've got the uh, back panels. These come over here for the rigging. We've got a dual battery switch. Uh, so we have twin batteries here, one on each side. And so there's your rigging there. You can see in there a little better. Move this out of the way. And I'll get that other side for you guys too here in a second. So you can see in here. Okay, so there's with all the uh, panels off of there, and that's how you get to your rigging. Here's the fish box, here's your batteries. Pretty basic in here. All right, here's your fuel access there. This is where you hook up your hose to, uh, to the uh, wash down there. The switch is missing here, and here's the wires to it. So apparently that didn't work. It needs to be fixed. Looks like it needs a switch there. Um, height of the top, I do have to dock. I'm 6'1", I barely have to duck, so we're about about almost six foot high inside, but I just need to duck a little bit to get inside. Uh, this chair here is movable around the deck. That's great when you're fishing out the back there. Uh, there, is a, there is a steering link between these two, so you can steer it with the, the main steering. Uh, one thing I really liked, as you heard in the other video, is I liked the uh, steering on this boat. It's really good storage underneath here and you got the little clam suspension so these seats have a little bit of rocking to them right there storage there first aid in there same thing this one is on a removable swivel to, i mean a, a adjustable swivel there too um, uh, shift controls here's our tilt trim on here and we kind of went over the switches already and checked all those out uh, but it did have the uh, the hours on the on there as well um, nice thing that Hughescraft is on their tops here is it unzips so you can go through there without having to unsnap the top. You can take that off and on. But you got to do this first. There you go. And zip that sealed up. Lock that to get up under the bow. Big bow area actually with uh, say two compartments in the bow. Really good setup there. Um, you have some little uh, area in here. Just looks like it goes into the hole. Nice and dirty in there. But nice access to have. You can also see if there's any water coming in or anything there. So got there. Nice little glove box there. Big glove box goes all the way back to there. Fire extinguisher in here. The rigging. Yeah. Excellent. This is a great, this is a solid fishing outfit, man. Be a solid fishing boat, you know, clean up a little bit, whatnot. Shoot, be really good. It's a consignment that we have here. Um, sadly, the uh, previous owner he's passed away, um, and stuff, so we are selling it for his wife. And uh, let's get this back channel back on, okay? So, we got that. I think that shows most of the benefits and features of the boat conditions, give you a pretty good idea on the overall condition of the boat uh, this side here comes down there's some if, if you remember i did point out while we were driving that i heard it rattling so you do get a little rattle if you have that but there's some rod storage in there you can close the rods up it doesn't really necessarily lock them but if that's latched you can kind of hide them put them back behind there and stuff so the offshore bracket makes it a lot quieter they are safe for the fact that you have a full transom so on the back if you're backing into anything now you have a full transom protecting you between you and the water and also if you have kids and stuff you have a higher back all the way around so that's nice too plus it's quieter in the boat because the motor noise gets blocked out to the outside so there's some advantages to that as well overall like i said you're about a 20 foot boat because you can count that bracket because it's just an extension of the hole there you go, 2005, 180, Sea Runner, Hughes Craft. Come check it out. We're here on Florence, Co uh, Florence Oregon, you know, right on the Oregon coast, dead center, it's right in the middle, hour out of Eugene. And so just cruise over. It's easy to come in and easy out. We're real easy to work with. It's just Jackson and I pretty much, and and uh, and we can get you get you set up, get you a deal on this boat. Um, any offers, welcome to bring them to us. We can take them to the owner of the boat, but. Uh, but it should be a, a, a good deal for somebody because it's got to sell.
So, and we're going to sell it in the next couple weeks. So, I'll tell you what, if it's here longer than that, man, make us an offer. But it, it's going to go quick. So, move on it quick. I'll guarantee you this boat's a, it's going to be a great deal for somebody.